Okay. Okay. Um, today I uh, I had this really big idea, and it's like one of those ideas that you haven't really been thinking about these things, but then all of a sudden you just start thinking about other possibilities, and you just anyway. I have all these notes because I just had to write it down today, and I don't know if this is going to make any sense, but just I'm just going to give a warning of this video, and that is. I'm, I'm setting forth a theory, but it's probably more science fiction than real science, and I don't know if it's if it could be considered legitimate. But for those of you who are more into science than I am, uh, feel free to just just tell me, you know, truth seeker, you're just way out there and you're just crazy, because maybe I am. I don't know, but um, okay. Most of you know that um, I am a creationist, and I, I, I pretty much shied away from young earth creationism, but I um, kind of chose not to, you know, make a decision in the matter. But um, let me just start by um, saying what it kind of like led to this whole uh, idea that I'm about to present. Uh, number one, okay, this idea is the result. See, I've got all these little notes on these little notepads that I stapled together because I can separate my thoughts and I can kind of like mix and match and stuff. Okay, I've got six reasons that are a result of a combination of these things. Number one, Cobain 52's challenge to all young earth creationists to consider theistic evolution. So if you're familiar with Cobain 52 and you're familiar with his videos and his uh, presentation of theistic evolution, if you're not, go look at his videos. He's a very bright young kid, knows more about the topic of evolution that I do but I will say this I was uh, watching uh, some of his videos today and so I began to research theistic evolution online so uh, number two in researching theistic evolution I came across a website it's uh, theisticevolution.com and I was reading a little bit on the, on the idea uh, set forth, which is called Days of Proclamation, uh, which is a theory that was proposed by Alan Hayward in 1985 and uh, described further by Glenn Morton in the late 1990s. Basic idea is the word of God is given, it's put forth, but it takes a while to be fulfilled, okay? So that basic idea got me thinking about a little more other, uh, along a little more other lines. Also, on that website, they show a chart describing the tossing of a ball, okay? And this is a little chart. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can, okay. So you can see the chart. Whoops. Okay. So the so the negative one is okay. So pretend like you're standing at zero, and you throw a ball, a baseball, and it travels uh, five feet. Okay. But you let go of the ball at zero. But if if you hadn't, the ball would have originated from negative one. So, okay. So then uh, I got to thinking about um, time. I was thinking about uh, physics and um, not that that chart means anything at all. It's just talking about physics and I just, it got my brain thinking about time. And of course, I'm thinking about the seven days of creation, and I'm thinking about time. 
Okay, so number four. Number four reason of the, that kind of got me thinking here. Uh, Fifth Watcher's video. If you haven't seen Fifth Watcher, go watch him. He's the Fifth Watcher. He's cool. Um, <laughs> he made a video where he talked about the universe in the beginning stages and that there was it was so compacted and so close together that when the universe started out as one point it was like it, I like the way he uses his terminology he calls it like a a morsel of universally goodness or something like that <laughs> anyway it was so compacted that the gravitational pull was so great that it's almost like time didn't even it didn't even exist but it did it was so slow it might not it might as well not have existed so 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 then uh, I started thinking about gravity and how gravity affects time 